Hey, wrestling fans, Roy Lusher here, and welcome to another exciting episode of Japanese Wrestling Classics with Roy Lusher. And do I have a special treat for you today? I have scored an interview with one of the most legendary figures from the All Japan promotion over the past 23, 24 years now. Um, this man is one of the final gra Gaijin graduates of the All Japan Dojo, and he tells us some stories from there. He also tells us about winning the Triple Crown, wrestling with New Japan, wrestling with Kijimuto, Minoru Suzuki, winning the Champion Carnival, and so much more. As you can tell by now, the man that I have on today is the legendary Taiyo Kea, calling straight from Hawaii. This episode, really, honestly, I, I couldn't be more proud of doing because, honestly, Kea is legendary status to me and then somebody was fully gracious enough to give us an hour of his time and to come on the show and tell us about some of those legendary matches, moments, getting into the dojo, meeting Baba, and everything else. So without further ado, let's get right to it and let's listen to my special interview with Taiyo Kea. Hey, everybody, wrestling fans, this is Roy Lusher here at Japanese Wrestling Classics with Roy Lusher, and I have a special treat here. I have on a former champion carnival winner, triple crown winner, New Japan tag, All Japan tag, and so much more, and I have on the line right now, Tai Okea. Uh, how you doing today, sir? I'm doing great, man. Thanks for, thanks for the interview. Absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. Uh, let's, dive, let's dive right into it. Tell us a little bit about growing up around your famous uncle, King Curtis Iakea. Did you go to a lot of wrestling shows as a kid? Actually, no, I didn't. <laughs> it was, uh, <laughs> yeah, you, you know, being around him, because he was already uh, retired, you know, like growing up, I, I was a little kid, you know. Um, so when we, when I interacted with him more, it was was like down at the beach when he had, he had a, a boogie board stand, a bodyboard stand down at Waikiki Beach. So I used to go on there, hang out with him, and, um, you know, just, like, do what little kids do, you know, catch waves and stuff like that. But, <laughs> you know, I, I didn't really see him as, like, you know, just, you know, he was a big dude, got all these scars on his head, and and everybody used to talk about him being a professional wrestler. And I'm like, oh, okay, okay, okay. But, um, yeah, I just, yeah. It didn't like, you know, some wrestlers would come down there. That, that's probably, probably my extent as a little kid. Uh, mm -hmm. with professional wrestling was like a maniac Mark Lewin lived right up the road for me. He oh, wow. In Hawaii. Yeah. And, and, you know, I, I didn't even know how, like how big of a star or, you know, his extent in pro wrestling was. And, and, um, yeah, man. And so not a lot of wrestling shows, but I, I, I interact with a lot of wrestlers. Gotcha. Now tell us a little bit about your career as an amateur. Weren't you like an amateur champion? Yeah, uh, high school, Hawaii State amateur wrestling uh, champion. Uh, two years, uh, my junior and senior year. Uh, my sophomore year, I took fifth in the state. That was my first year of wrestling. And, uh, wow. Yeah, not, not bad. Either <laughs> either I was pretty good or everybody else was pretty shitty. You know? <laughs> <laughs> now, at what point did you decide that you wanted to become a professional wrestler? So that goes back with, uh, you know, with uh, being around all the wrestlers and stuff. But I never thought about it as a profession. And, uh, you know, I, I remember, I could tell you this, like, yeah, I remember my high school girlfriend were watching TV. It was like WWE was on, WWF was on. And I was like, man, is, uh, she goes, you think you ever do that? I was like, nah, probably no way I'll do that. You know, I'd, I'd see all the boys, <laughs> like I said, I see all the boys and everything. And I'd probably never do that. So come my senior year, I took, uh, you know, I, I took a state championship. And then, so, uh, Curtis, um, comes, he tells me, hey, you, um, you ever thought about, you know, getting to professional wrestling and I was, and I was like uh, I don't know and but he'd always you know he'd always mess around with me too so I didn't know if I could be serious he goes you know you, you always you kind of been around the boys you see you see guys that come down here but you know I think you kind of really fit good in the business and I was like um I don't know the I think about it I was planning you know I think about going to college and stuff so um he goes you know what uh just go get your passport and uh, this is like this is like I'm talking. So wrestling season was over like February, February or so, of 2000 and um, uh, no, I'm sorry, not 2000, 1990, uh, 1994. Mm -hmm. And um, 
So he goes, you know, go get your passport. And I got my passport. And then he set up a profile for me. He goes, you know, give me some pictures. And, you know, I have a few pictures of me with my, my medals and stuff. And so he set up a profile and he gave it to Lord Tallyho Blairs. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and then, you know, but him I always, I knew of, you know, growing up. And, and he, he'd, he'd do, like, a lot of surf contests. And, you know, I've seen some interviews of him doing it. So, um, give my inner, and then, uh, Lord Blairs was going up to all Japan. Uh, he'd go up there, I think, maybe three times a year or so back then. Mm-hmm. And so he took my profile up to, um, Giant Baba. And I did really didn't think about it. And, um, so I graduated, uh, fast forward, graduated high school in about June, beginning of June. And, um, he tells, Curtis tells me, you know, um, uh, Giant Baba's coming over to Hawaii and, uh, you know, it'd be a good time to go meet him and talk about it if you, you know, if, if you know, if he take you up there in, to Japan and, um, you know, maybe you might have a career up there. Um, he was talking about another guy, which I didn't know about at the time, but it was Richard Slinger. He goes, there's another guy up there, you know, he's, oh, uh, yeah. yeah, American guy, you know, he, um, he went up there, he went to the dojo system, you know, just made it, made it, make it a pretty good living and stuff, you know, and, you know, you might have a shot and stuff. So I was like, you know, um, okay, I'll, I'll meet with him. And so I, th- I think it was it was at the middle of June or so. To, that's when he was down there. So I met up with uh, Tally Ho Blair, who he took me over to go see Giant Baba. Had lunch with him over in Ala Moana, this big shopping center and stuff. And, uh, <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> yeah, you've been there. Huh? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. It was, it was this place it used to be called Liberty House, which is Macy's now. So I uh, <laughs> get up over there. You know, I've seen pictures of Giant Bobo, but never met him. Of course, first time meeting him in person. Big man, big voice, big booming yeah. voice. And mm-hmm. and his wife was there. And then the referee, Wada Kyohei, he was there. And oh. Ryu, Ryu uh, who went over to, the, he was a ring announcer, went over to, of course, Noah uh, after. But he was there and stuff. So. Mm-hmm. And it's also Ken Hirayama was there, too. So, yeah, that's, that's yeah. my first time. How familiar, I mean, were you familiar with the wrestlers in all Japan before you started your training, there? Um, no, I wasn't. Uh, I seen a couple, um, all I saw was actually a program. I seen a program like a year, a year before, but New Japan, they used to show New Japan as a, uh, on the Japanese TV in Hawaii as a kid. So that's about it. I, I, I but I, I know, I knew of Antonio Inoki, um, I, I really didn't follow it too much, to tell you the truth. And then I just and then I just look at pictures and stuff like that. So I really didn't didn't know. So and then my uncle never really he we talk about wrestling, but he wouldn't talk to me about the business of wrestling, you know. Gotcha. So yeah, I was just uh, so yeah. When actually when I you know met you know talking back with Mister Bobo when I met him. He's like, hey, uh, so, you know, you small talk, chitter chatter. He goes, uh, so, here, you want to go to Japan? I was like, oh, yeah. He goes, uh, you know, cut to it. He was like, uh, when when would you want to come? And I said, you know, well, whenever you'd have me. He goes, well, I, I leave in three days. Do you want to go? And I was like, sure. And I thought it was like an opportunity. I was like, you know, if it, if it doesn't work out, I'll go to, go to college, go to school. And, um, yeah, it was, it was pretty quick. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> What was your first day of training like in the dojo? Um, there were – so I, I get to Japan. Uh, I left on the 27th, uh, June 27th. Um, get there, and the next day, so I, you know, go to sleep at the dojo. The next day, they had some training, so I did some training with them. But they were really pretty easy on me. Like, you know, it was my 18 years old. They they're actually pretty cool. Like, looking back on it now, they are super nice to me that – Actually, those first few days, and I, I think Mr. Bravo, you know, he asked them, like, to kind of take it easy. He's a fresh-faced kid. And, yeah, if I, if I was Japanese, they would have ate me up, and I would have <laughs> I would, probably would have went home, like, the next day, you know. And they were actually pretty cool to me, like, the first few days. Um, it's pretty – and then, but we went on the road, like, right after that, and I had no idea, like, what – they were like, oh, tomorrow we, we go road. And I was like, we go where? They go, we go road. We go on the road. So pack your bags. We go road, and I had like I had no clue what they were talking about. So we're on the road, and I was like, "Go, go training. We go run on the road." And he goes, "No, no, no. We we travel. We go." So we went and going on to Kyushu, and then on that tour we started training. I started um, doing push ups, whatever, squats, and um, but I tell you, I mean, it was hard. But 
when it really sunk in is when we got after that tour was finished that first tour and we got back to the dojo and then like we got down to the nitty gritty and then it was then it got we got started bumping and then it got brutal <laughs> wow yeah now who are some of the people you trained with in the dojo and worked with directly in the dojo um so it was always uh kenta kobashi ran the ran the dojo and the training oh. and everything. He yeah, he ran it. He ran the dojo. And so, but in the dojo with me at that time, my roommate was uh, Shiga Ken, Shiga Kentaro. Uh huh. And then, but actually, the living in the dojo, like the head guy was um, um, was Satoru. Um, Asako. And, yeah, Asako. Asako san. Yeah, my best. Yeah. And then um, there was Jun Akiyama, uh, Omori. Um, uh, Honda, Tamon Honda, Izumira, um, who else was in there? Yeah, Kurt that, that Byer was Kurt Byer had there. already left, right? Yeah, he already left already. Okay. Yeah. Now, how nervous were you the first that you stepped into the ring? Oh, nervous, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, super nervous. And this, yeah, it, it was, it, it was nerve wracking. Like, this, it, it Everything you'd be leading up to that, it was it was pretty, you got pretty nerve wracking. It was it's just it's a different world. I mean, yeah, it's just a totally different world. <laughs> now, early on, who were some of the wrestlers you enjoyed working with that would help you grow as a wrestler? Um, you know, I, I'd say everybody. Everybody helped me in in their own way. Um, either if they're being strict, they're being hard on me. Like, like I I took it and I take it as they were they were helping me they wanted me to be better so but the big one the big influences was of course uh kendo kobashi mm -hmm. um uh, jun akiyama he was a big influence with me because he, he would come give me little bits here and there and even uh shiga san she she because he was my direct senpai he was like just right above me as a yeah. ranking went in the dojo and um yeah, I'd say everybody like did you know everybody had like their little say and like you know they give you tips here and there and and tell me like um, to visualize what you know what you know visualize things and see it in your mind and so uh, yeah. What was it like being in the ring those early years with guys like Stan Hansen and Doctor Death Steve Williams? Oh, it was um, it was good, man. It was it was it was pretty awesome. Uh, probably at, you know at that time didn't realize it as much but i i you know there there were like especially stan stan i mean stan's a beast man and um uh, stan's a beast deep beast and um even steve williams like I, I remember being in the ring with him and uh this is uh i just got off the play, uh, you know came in this is like maybe three four years into my career and i had i was, I was congested in hawaii got on the plane flew over to japan next day corrigan hall had a match with stan hansen he gives me his his doctor uh belly to back suplex. I hit the like the top of my shoulders hits the mat. Boom! As I come up, like, you know, I do that bump. I come up like a, just a whole glob of flame <laughs> spits out of my spits out of my mouth, and it like cleared me up, man. And I was like, damn, you're the, you're the doctor, huh? <laughs> yeah. It's just like I was cleared. I just swear to God, it was like his 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 finish like. Yeah, I finished my my code, man. This is it's, it's pretty crazy. And, uh, yeah, even Stan, like I remember, Stan was just a freaking beast, man. It was like, like watching him, like outside of the ring, and it, like just get inside the ring. Like I mean, just him. You know, you've seen the videos. I'm sure. I don't know if he's yes. there when he wrestled and stuff, but just the people, like especially like the small towns, and just pressing up against the door, and him standing behind the door with his rope. And just like this breathing, uh, just like grunting, and then just like he's just like letting out the bull, man. He just and you know, as this young boys, we driving the door, we just open that door, and he goes just comes flying out. It's just it was crazy. Like I tell people stories about him, like here, like people that not involved with wrestling at all, and they they have no concept. They're like, what? He's whacking people with a rope? And I was like, yeah, he's, he's just beating the shit out of the fans, and they're loving every minute of it. And then he's like, what? And then he, Get away with that and not be sued. I said, I don't know. Maybe he, he probably gets sued now, but like, shit, not back then, you know. <laughs> I think he said he caught um, Tiger Jeet Singh doing it once at a New Japan show, and he just 
said from there, well, if he can get away with it, so can I. Yeah, yeah I did hear that. I did hear that, too. Yeah. <laughs> now, what was the buzz like in the locker room when the boys heard that Gary Albright had left UWFI and would sign with All Japan? You know what? Um, back that time, you know, I was still a still a young boy, and I I used to see him in the magazine, but I didn't. Yeah, I, I think they were kind of cautious about him because they didn't. I, I think some people knew him. There's a, yeah, there's only a couple. I think Johnny Smith was it Johnny Smith that I think knew him from before, but mm-hmm. not a lot of the boys knew him. And then here comes this big, uh, you know, from a shoot 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 fighting company, big dude. Um, had no, you know, I think everybody was just a little cautious, you know, kind of, I wouldn't say excited, but just, just, just cautious at first, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Now, same as Albright, what was the buzz like in the company when Hiroshi Hase jumped from New Japan to All Japan, and how was it like to wrestle against him his first night in the company? Oh, he was, yeah, he was awesome. And the guy, he's just like, like nonstop. His, his conditioning you know, is like, is like unreal. Like, yeah, the guys. He was he was a machine, and um, yeah, I, that was pretty big news at that time. Um, yeah, he he was he was a machine man. Like the guy, like I never. He just wouldn't get tired. This is he's pretty awesome. Yeah, he's, I remember at the time it's like you didn't see guys jump from one company to another, and then all of a sudden you heard like Hase's leaving and coming all Japan. It was you yeah, know, on, yeah. On TV, it was really perceived as like a huge deal, you know. Yeah, yeah, and it was a big deal, you know. But you know, I I, I believe that you know that came to play with him running, you know, politics, running for politics and stuff. Yeah. Um, from what I remember, you know. So, uh, but yeah, it was, it was still awesome. Now, the same night you wrestled Hase, you also won the annual Battle Royal. How big of an honor was that to win that prestigious event in 97 and then again in 98 and 2000? Oh, it was great, man. It was, it was awesome. Uh, first time, yeah. It, it was it was great. It was fantastic. Um, um, every, everything that, you know, man, like everything that I've, I've accomplished or I got to do in, in wrestling and um yeah, in, in all Japan wrestling, no matter what I did in wrestling, like I, I'm pre, I'm super grateful for, pre, and you know, really thankful for, and um, the things I got to do, the people I got to wrestle, it's um, it's, it's, it's I'd, I'd say it was a great journey, but I, you know, freaking, I'm going to Japan next week, so nice. my journey's my journey's kind of continuing. So good. Uh, now you've won a lot of titles throughout your illustrious career. Your first one was the junior title against Ogawa. Take mm-hmm. us back to that night. What do you remember most about the show and how nervous were you? Oh, I was nervous. Um, and it, Ogawa, Ogawa-san was like somebody that I, you know, really looked up to. Um, and I still looked up to. And um, just so like, actually, i tell you the truth. Like today, he's, I, I don't talk to him as much, but of all the guys in wrestling, um, like on the Japanese boy side, he's like my he'd say he's my closest friend. He's gotcha. Like my, yeah, he's like uh, my you know he's my senpai. He's, he's he's an older guy, but he took care of me a lot as as a um, as a young wrestler. And he was like one of those guys, you know, he's a technician. He's just a really great wrestler. Um, but yeah, man, it was just like it was, it was it was an honor to wrestle him and to go, you know, to to. to um, to beat him and, you know, take the championship away from him. It was uh, pretty amazing. Now, what was it like to represent All Japan and Team Kobashi at that FMW Kawasaki Stadium show in 97 against Hayabusa and Jinsei Shinsaki? Yeah, that's like another one. That's, that's, that's like another one that's been like... <laughs> what I know I remember most about that show is how how, how hard that freaking ring was, for one. <laughs> <laughs> um, that, that, that always sticks in my mind. I like... I remember because we wrestled, I believe we wrestled earlier in that day at Corrigan Hall, and then we shot mm-hmm. over there, and we did that match. And then, um, but, uh, yeah, man, it was, I mean, he was like, yeah, even those guys, I mean, Hayabusa, um, Jinsei, Jinsei was, like, one of those guys I used to, like, just, like, his entrance music, I used to love, just listen to his entrance music. I was just like, yeah, he, he, was, he was, like, they're both, like, fat asses. They're, they're just, you know, great wrestlers, <laughs> great workers, and, but, yeah, it was, it's one of those things, man. It's fortunate, you know? Yeah. 
Now, who came up with the idea to leave the junior division and start the heavyweight side and begin that journey with the Mossman Trial Series? Um, that's more. That's like an office. That was an office thing. Mm-hmm. Um, all Japan office. Uh, was, was named Fuchi. <laughs> yeah, Masa Fuchi. Yeah. 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 Okay. Fuchi son. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, how was Baba as a person to you, both inside and out of the ring? Uh, man, just not no unkind words. Just all oh, nothing but nothing but praise, man. Like outside the ring, took care of me. Inside, yeah, both. Yeah, both, both. There's nothing. Yeah, honestly, I mean, I sound like a guy that's kissing ass, but it, it's not. It's it's the truth, you know. It's just, he he was just, you know, like come to Hawaii, he's like he's, you know, just like. Yeah, he he always took care of me. Like going out to eat dinner. Like actually, I was just telling this to like a friend the other day. Like how, you know, every night I like the young boys. Like you know, just he go out and eat dinner with him and um, just whatever you want on the menu. We're I mean, we're staying in beautiful hotels and you know, prime rib, whatever you want to do. And, you know, whatever you wanted on that menu, you pretty much got. And I mean, yeah, he because he just wanted the young boys to he wanted them to grow and. It, and, and get big. That was his philosophy. You know, eat, you know, wrestlers eat, and um, and it was poor thing, man. Like uh, Shiga-san, Shiga San, Shiga Kintaro. Like you know, he was always like skinny. He was ripped, but he was just so skinny. And like Mr. Baba, you, you you know, you you eat more, you know, in Japanese or you, you eat more <laughs> too skinny, too skinny. And uh, and poor guy, he's like his mouth would just be chewing, and he like he'd have like a kind of spaghetti, a steak, and then uh, you know um, he'd have like I swear like. Three to four dishes, no bullshit, entrees, and then after that, you know, he'd tell him to go eat some ice cream and some. And then, like him and I, we'd both be walking up, you know, to, you know, come, you know, Mr. Baba, tell him good night, say some of this, uh, you know, go to some of this, uh, and I him thank you. And the elevator would close, and both of us would just be grabbing our stomachs. So I was like, oh man, just like going back to our room. It's like I can't sleep. I don't know. Like my stomach's just sore. It's just <laughs> man. Is this? Uh, I mean, like who does that? I mean, like that's just. <laughs> I mean, it's just like, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. Do you remember what you were doing when you got the news that Baba San had passed away? Um, yeah, actually, I was, because uh, I started going back and forth to Hawaii at that time. Um, so, at that time, I remember I was in my, uh, my apartment that I was renting and um, watching TV, and I got a phone call. Yeah, um, that was... Yeah, because the last time I saw him, we uh, we were, I believe it was, the, it was the the tag tournament. I'm bad with with times and dates, but um, we was the tag tournament, and we were just getting up to Sendai, and he was in the bus, and he I remember him saying how, how his, you know his stomach was sore, mm-hmm. and because um, on the I rode the small bus with him. And um, I sat like he sat in the very front seat on the left, and I sat with um, Kyohei-san, and mm-hmm. we were like to to the right of him. So we sat in the two, and he, he sat in the, the big chair up in the front, and, and he was complaining about how, how his stomach was sore and stuff. So that was the last I saw of him, and you know he went back to Tokyo and um, took the Shinkansen back to Tokyo and uh, went to the hospital. Then didn't, didn't hear anything. Then. Heard he, you know, wasn't doing good in the hospital, and um, yeah, it was, it was it was sad and it was quick, you know. Jeez, uh, almost makes you think if he had like gone into a, like a doctor sooner, that you know maybe he might still be around today, you know. Oh, for sure, you know, like they, and then that's what how, like, you know, all the boys, uh, Japanese side, uh, American side, guys inside, whatever, like you know, everybody would you know says like you know what. How how would wrestling be different? You know, it's Mr. Bobble, You know, lived on longer. You know, and and how would the business? Because you know, after that business, seriously, business changed. You know, and, uh, oh, absolutely. Around. Now let's yeah. talk about how the business changed and go to the split between All Japan and Noah. Did any of the guys ask you to join them at Noah? Um, I'll say yes, but uh, guys from that side will say no. Um, <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, I just I, I got asked and um, but um, yeah, I ended up. I remember I got a phone call from Mrs. Bawa and uh, she told me 
um, you know, uh, that she was going to continue on with All Japan Pro Wrestling and uh, would, you know, would I help, this, you know, would you, like, you know, help together and, you know, stuff. So, yeah, of course, so stayed there and uh, best decision ever made. <laughs> now, I, I, I believe I've heard you talk about this before, but what was the main decision behind you staying behind and remaining with All Japan? That's some kind of like, you know, something to do with your uncle? Yeah, it, it was it was loyalty all like all the way around. It's just like you know, like I I, I knew um, he never said it to me, but I knew it would have it. It's kind of like a you know like somebody you start with. Uh, I'm I'm pretty loyal to to people, you know and. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I, I started with Mr. Baba, and I, I looked at it was like a continuation of, of his legacy at that time. And uh, you know, this things, I, I'm you know, the, the guys you know, the Masalasan that you know broke off and you know made his company and you know everything. Like I, they, I'm sure you know, I know they have their legit reasons why they, they did what they did and, and how they did everything that they did. You know, I was only. With the wrestling business, you know, uh, you know, it wasn't, you know, it, it wasn't as way as as close to as, as long as they were in the business, you know, and you know, there's yeah. probably things that I don't know about, you know, and that's why I say like they have their reasons, and but I had my reasons, yeah, and uh, and I stuck to my 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 reasons and followed through with it, and yeah. Okay. What was the cause of the name change in August of 2000 from Mossman to your current ring name, Kaiokea? Uh, it was like, <laughs> it was like, uh, uh, it was like the people in the office. I remember like Wally Yamaguchi and stuff like that. Like they, I guess they wanted something a little bit easier to, you know, for Japanese people to say. And then there was like a, there was like a list of names that people came in with, like the fans wrote in with. There was like. I remember it was like the sniper, and it was like it was like some <laughs> like ridiculous names and stuff like that. And, then, and uh, there was like all these kind of names, the, the, the yeah, freaking Black Shadow. I don't you name it, it was out there. And then, um, it sounds like Vince McMahon inspired gimmicks. <laughs> yeah, it was like it was it, it was like, I swear, it was like I remember we were like at freaking the, the office at that, that time was still in uh, Pongi. And like we're there was a subway sandwich shop like right downstairs. So I remember him and I, Wally Yamaguchi, were were sitting down there. We're looking at there's like two pages, you know, front and back like, of just names. I mean, of this like, <laughs> I was just like, what the fuck is this? And it was like, yeah, this is like, this is like, and it's like, you know, it, and it's it's uh, Japanese English too. Like, yeah, let's go back for it. So you know, it was like something that I believe that he came up with, and then. And I was at that point. I was just like, okay, yeah, yeah, so yeah, sounds good. And then he was like, I okay. And then after I was, I was like, fuck, okay, whatever, man. I'll, I'll, we'll go along with it. And then, um, and everybody to this day always asks me, how how did you come up with that name? And I was like, I don't know. It was a combination between um, my name and because everybody would call me Kea, you know, mm-hmm. Monica Mossman. So my friends in the, back in Hawaii call me Kea. Mrs. Bobo call me Kea. Um, Giant Bobo, the fans would call me Kea. So um, I was just cutting it up and then. You know, being the whole whole Hawaii scene and uh, Tayo, Bright Sun, Strong Sun, and mm-hmm. so yeah. yeah. Now, in two thousand one, at the Champion Carnival, you had an amazing showing with multiple impressive wins, going to the finals against Tenru. How important was that entire event to you and your status with the fans? Oh, that was that was um, that was big, and it was it, you know big steps in my career, and um, holy shit. Like yeah, like wrestling against Tenru, like I've had like so many boot laces across my forehead. I mean, <laughs> man, it was just brutal, man. Like wrestling against him is, um, yeah, like I I left always like purple chested and like laces across my my forehead and, um, <laughs> I don't know, I, man, I had like I think I earned a lot of, <laughs> I don't know if I earned respect with the fans, but like shit, like. Yeah, it, it was it was a, it was it was tough, man, going against him, and and then finally, you know, like wrestling against him, Holly, how many times, and finally, like you know, beating him, it was like it was pretty. Yeah, it, was, it was it was big for myself, and legit, I say legit tears <laughs> coming out of yeah. my eyes, and you know, it's just like yeah, sweet. You know. Now, how was it working in a new Japan ring after all these years as a part of Mudo's Bat Faction back in the early two thousands? That was fun. Super fun, man! It was because it was like it was a different different atmosphere, and 
and shit like New Japan. They were they were smoking hot back then. They're like, and I mean, they were just like it was. They were, the fans were different, and um, it was just a change. Just having that, that change up, man. It was, it was super cool, and just you know, uh, Muto coming back. He was like a you know, he still is a star, a superstar, but like back then, just coming back, he was just and like actually that was one of those guys. When I got to Japan, um, he was one of those guys actually that I, I used to watch, him. and mm-hmm. and I was always like a fan of his. And um, him and actually great Kabuki, Kabuki. I was as a kid like great great Kabuki was huge for me. He had, um, shit. What was he in the, not NWA? Was it NWA? Yeah, it was NWA with like yeah, um, NWA. Jerry Hart was his manager. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, like I just watched him as a kid, and I was like, you know, because I was I was into like anything ninja as a kid. I was I was, I was a big mark for. It. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but like, yeah, watching like Muto, him coming back, and then him just being a badass, and him just having his own style and his own rhythm when he got into the ring, like his movements and like the way how he carried himself in and outside the ring was was cool, and then like just to be like a part of him. Uh, part of his team, uh, part of what he was doing, you know, it, it was it was pretty cool, man. <laughs> now you don't work a lot in the states. However, in 2002, you wrestled for MLW in Philadelphia. Is there a backstory uh-huh. to that? Um, backstory went with um, the connection with that was with Gary Albright. So, oh, okay. you know, yeah, with uh, Court Bauer. So Court at that time, I believe, you know, he was he was doing stuff with Appa. Mm-hmm. Uh, in Pennsylvania, uh, you know, I, I didn't know too much, but I know he was doing stuff with Alpha and helping out maybe his his program over there. But um, and you know Gary's uh, connection through marriage with the, yes, the Samoans yes. and stuff. Yep. Yeah. So um, I guess him and him and Court became um, you know good friends and stuff. And uh, um, then I would slowly like Court would email me. And I had an email, but I wasn't into email, so like he emailed me, and I was like, oh, I just like one word answers back. And then I remember he called me, and I, you know, make small talk with him and stuff. And then, uh, yeah, that, that, that's how it, that's how that happened. I mean, going over to MLW. Yeah. Um, how were things as a whole when you finally did appear for Noah uh, at the Tokyo Dome show in 2004, teaming with Muto against Misawa Nogawa? That was. Um, that was pretty. That was cool. I, I dug it. It was it was fun to do. Um, you know, um, it had a, it had an old all Japan feel to it, but it it, it wasn't. It was different. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I heard some stories that it was actually, I think, uh, Koalatan was supposed to be in there for some reason, and it's something he didn't. He ended up not doing. It. He didn't want to do it. So I think I was kind of like a. I don't. I don't know if it was a tag match or something was in it, but I know he was supposed to be involved somehow, and yeah. he ended up not wanting to do it, and um, so I got in there. But um, it was fun to do, and it was just actually cool seeing all the the boys and just being around them. You know, all the guys that I, I started with, and then there was everybody was cool to me. Like not not single. Everybody was at least in my face, you know. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, everybody, everybody was cool to me. But I I believe it was genuine. It's like it just. Even to today, like there's there's really nobody that I, that I see um, when I'm like from wrestling from back in the day that really gives me any like shit or you yeah. know everybody's pretty respectful and because I do and there are guys that you know it's like you know oh you know screw that guy you know or but uh, everybody's pretty legit it's pretty good now take us back to your first champion carnival victory in 2006. How is it to finally win that prestigious tournament, which is a dream of anyone who's ever wrestled for all Japan? Oh yeah, man. Um, it's awesome. Uh, it was fantastic, great, or whatever every, every word you want to use. Um, uh, but you know, it, it like, yeah, it, it was it was brutal. Cause <laughs> there's some man. I remember like I had some thirty minute draws, and then I don't know it, it was it was it was tough, man. Like always, those timing carnivals, like just knowing when they're when they're coming around, like just like man, this. It's gonna be a rough tour, like because you know you you know you, you got to put out, and um, it's uh those are always pretty tough, but uh but yeah, it's cool, man. <laughs> now you also won the triple crown later that year. What was it like to finally win that title as well? Um, uh, pretty crazy. Um, yeah, um, and that was when um actually, shit, um, Maddie, um, 
uh, Rosie. I remember he was yeah. there, too. Yeah, speaking, you know, rest in peace. Yeah. Um, Rosie was there, and, uh, yeah, and um, Paco and stuff. So, yeah, I mean, it's, 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 like I said, man, I had some, I've been fortunate in my life, you know. Things, now, things any, I got to do. Any fond memories of working with that R O and D faction with uh, Taka, Take Dilo, Bull, and the rest of the crew? Oh yeah, that was the same thing. That was like, um, like that was like a bat thing, man. It was like, it was fun, fun, fun to do. Like all it would, um, Eki, um, oh, what was his other Jamal? Yeah, yeah, yeah Jamal, man, it was, it was fun. Like it, that, like wrestling with those bunch of guys, Buchanan, like man, it was just, it was fun, fun to do. These guys, it was like, I mean, it was fun inside the ring, outside the ring. It was, it was fun. Yeah. Now, you spent the majority of your career working in Japan. Other than MLW, was there ever any other promotions that had serious interest of bringing you into the States? You know, people, like, they would talk about it, like, I, I, but I just never pursued it for some reason. Like, I just, like, ah, you know, I was, I was content where I was at. Um, Actually, oh, shit, when ECW um was going to um, ECW was kind of starting off, and then I remember uh, it was Tajiri. Tajiri was over there, mm-hmm. and who was it else? Tajiri and Super Crazy. So yeah. they were talking about um, I forget who from the office, but they were talking about me going over there and then like um, rooming with those guys and, and working for ECW. And then that was actually um, John Ace was like, "Fuck man, you don't you don't want to you want to wrestle with those guys, and you, you know you're not going to get paid and." And everything, but you know, like looking back, like you know, there's one of those things. Like you, I wish, wish I did it. You know, it was my decision and stuff eventually. But um, wish I got to do it. I would have. That would have been. I think I would. I would have looked at wrestling a lot differently, and I, my probably my style maybe would have changed a little bit more, and it would have been cool. It would have been fun. Yeah. yeah. Looking back on your career, who are some of your favorite opponents to work with? Um, I say Muto, Muto Zan. Mm-hmm. Um, he was he was always fun to wrestle with. Um, who else? Shit, uh, Mutosan, uh, Ogawa-san was always fun. Um, Suzuki-san, Suzuki was fun. Minoru um, Suzuki? Yeah, Minoru, Minoru Suzuki. He's really starting to hit it off big in the states n- nowadays. Really. Yeah, he wrestled for ROH um, last weekend or the weekend before, and I mean the, he against Cody Rhodes, and he really got over with the crowd so really? much that that's they awesome. brought they're bringing him in four more times uh, in the next couple of weeks. Oh, that's awesome, man. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's super good. I'm glad to hear that, man. He's, he's like one of those guys too that he became like a, a you know pretty close friend with me. And, um, <laughs> and he, we used to we used to uh, we, before our, um, our matches we used to spar. We used to we used to. We should grapple and stuff. So he seems to be fun. And actually, yeah, was like he's like, you know, he's catch, he was freaking good at um, ankle locks and stuff. And, man, he's like one of those guys, like, you know, he get a Achilles hold on you, and it's like it would freaking hurt for, like, two days. And I've never had that before. Like, And I just told him that, like, I don't know what, what kind of technique he's using. I don't know if his bone is shaped a certain way or what. But, man, it would, like, hurt a few days after. But re- – Rolling around with him like inspired me to get better and like fucking train you just every time I'd go back home train and I get back and I'd train and you know I get a little bit better a little bit better than you know and uh, yeah it's, it's fun man yeah um, are you familiar with fellow Hawaiian wrestler Jeff Cobb if so any thoughts about him you know I I know of him but I've I've seen pictures of him uh, of him throwing people but I've no I've, I haven't seen him wrestle I've never got to meet him. Um, same mutual friends with uh, Kaimana. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were tag teams together. Uh, but no, and yeah. He had the same exact answer about you. He's my neighbor, Matt <laughs> Folsom. I brought up to him last week that I was interviewing you, and I said, you, you, you know, you he's all like, we're from the same, we're like from the same island, but we just never yeah. run into each other before. Yeah, you know? man. <laughs> yeah, it'd be awesome to, you know, meet him one day. But yeah, yeah, and I heard, yeah, because I, I, you know, I, I, I'd seen him before, um, uh, with the local uh, Hawaii promotions, and then it was ECW. Yeah, ECW. Yeah, but I, I I would see um because I'm friends with Kaimana on top there, and, and you know he he posts pictures and just you know I'd see them tagging, and then they go up to the you know go up to the stage, and then you know I see more pictures, and next thing you know like I shit I I saw him um I, I hear more people talking about Jeff and stuff, so I mean 
Good for him, man. That's it's awesome, that, you know. Yeah. Now, what is your current status? Are you retired, semi-retired? Would you make appearances as a bass team? Um, yeah, yeah. I, mean, t- <laughs> I don't know. You tell me, man, what I am. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was, I was, I wouldn't say I'm retired because I'm, like I said, I'm wrestling next week. Um, I guess I'm semi-retired. I'd say, I'm saying that because, you know, I, I don't go on the road like how I used to, like, not like full time. Um, um, yeah, it's just, like, it's just, I like, kind of wrestle when I want to kind of deal and, Mm-hmm. When I'm free and when I got yeah, it's, but yeah, it's 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 um like I, I miss it and I, I I you know I miss wrestling like I miss man I like I, tell you the truth like I I mean I, I love I love like the adrenaline rush before you go out there like that that little that little juice um but like I miss like being around the boys that that's the fun parts you know about wrestling <laughs> um but yeah yeah I, I I miss it but I don't miss the grind of the road I say that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but it's still fun. It's, it's still fun too, you know. I mean, it's just like it's like one of those things. Like when you're in it, I mean, you kind of you kind of bitch about it, but when you're out of it, then you're like, ah, you know, it, you know, it'd still be fun. And, <laughs> but yeah, so I said semi-retired. Yeah. Now, thank you for your time today. Any final words you have for the listeners who have been supporting you and following your career over the past couple decades? Oh man, I just thank you, thank you, everybody. Um, thank you for the support. Supported me, didn't support me, you know, love you, don't love me, you know, this, I loved it all, I still love it, it's, it's, it's fun, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a, look, it's a journey, man, it's just, it's been an amazing journey, like I said before, man, I've been fortunate, I've been blessed, um, yeah, love it, dig it, man, thank you, everybody. All right, thank you so much for your time, you have a wonderful evening, I really appreciate you giving me a few minutes of your time. Awesome, bro. You have a good night. Likewise, you too.
Hey, it's Jeff Cobb, and you're listening to Japanese Wrestling Classics with Roy Lusher. Aloha. Hey, wrestling fans, and there you go. There is my interview with Taiokea. Um, I hope you honestly enjoyed it. I have uh, on my next episode somebody who I'm <sighs> – I, I, I really am excited about doing this next one, just so you know. Um, he was in all Japan in the 80s and 90s, and uh, he comes from a legendary wrestling family. And I'll leave it at that. He was <laughs> did some legendary fights in the 80s and 90s. Uh, singles wrestler and tag wrestler. Um, before I close out the show today, I did want to give a few shout-outs out there. First of all, as you heard by the little video audio clip, uh, Jeff Cobb um, was gracious enough to welcome everybody and thank you for listening to the show. Uh, please check out his his line on Suplex and Pro Wrestling Tees. I, I can't recommend them enough. Um, if you live in the Elk Grove, California area, we got a show going on SST Wrestling with the Samoan SWAT team. Um, uh, the Tonga Kid will be holding a benefit show there for local women's veterans. If you're in the area, I highly recommend checking it out. A week after that will be the Cow Palace in San Francisco. So far, the main event is listed as Rey Mysterio Jr. and Juventud Guerrera against Pentagon and Phoenix. Penta Cerro Miedo and Ray Phoenix. So we got old school lucha against new school lucha. I'm definitely looking forward to this. And also, if you haven't heard yet, there is a lucha expo called Expo Lucha that will be taking place next year in Las Vegas at the Orleans Arena. Uh, the event is August 31st and September 1st. It's being held by Mass Republic. Um, please, if you get a chance, check out this event. And we're talking over 100 luchadors. Four wrestling events. The two of the biggest mass collectors, uh, Christian Cement and um, what's it, Hayashi, the guy that makes Rey Mysterio's gear, is going to be there uh, showing off their collection. Uh, I will be there as well, and I hopefully will look forward to seeing as many of you as possible. Anyways, let's close this out, and let me just say thank you so much for all your support. All the inboxes, all the emails, all the text messages, and everything else. Trust me, your your comments, your likes, your shares, everything. It comes, honestly, I get overwhelmed at times. So I just want to say thank you to everybody out there for all of your support that you show. Thank you again, and we'll see you next time on another episode of Japanese Wrestling Classics with Roy Lusher.